welcome to our garden at plot 16 I suppose. So I'm at the allotment today. It is the 20th of January. So this video is not just going to be today, it's actually going to be over the course of the last week. Um, I'll finish off the last few things today. Just come down the allotment because I've had a few ideas what I want to do with our poly tunnel. So first thing that I've got to do is strip all of the plastic off of some big cardboard boxes. Um, I'll do a little time lapse for that. Uh, the next thing I need to do is try to level off the ground in here. It's very cold, very frosty, um, but in the poly tunnel it's a little bit warmer. There is a little bit of frost in here, but it's negligible. So all my plan is to do at the allotment today is to flatten this off, get the cardboard all set, and then at some point in the next week or so I'm going to get some compost down on it. Um, the ground's actually quite good. Um, it's, you can't really see that, can you? But it's very dark filled with nutrients. Evidently this plot has been looked after and fed, which is brilliant. Um, so yeah, things you're going to see is the construction of this. I'll probably put that in first, so that'll be the next bit you see. Um, then I need to get all my seedlings in. I've got two varieties of potatoes to get, get chitting. Um, some first earlies and second earlies. I haven't got main crop yet. Um, that's because I haven't found one that I like. I will do main crop as well because good yield and gets you excited, doesn't it? Um, but in here, I think what I'm going to do is plant some winter salads and spring salads. And then mid-February, maybe late February, I may try and get some peas down here. Question for all the viewers though. So this polytunnel was not a very expensive polytunnel. It's a metal frame, metal tubes. It's really good, I'm very pleased with it, but there's a lot of slack in it. Now if I were to, say, in the corners here and all the way across the ribs, put a bit of, say, duct tape or something to that effect across the outer sheet and the frame to try and give it a little bit more structure and stop it flapping about, do you reckon that would affect it? Let us know in the comments. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and do it unless I hear any of you guys say that you shouldn't for any good reason. But yeah, so, plan for today, right now for me, finish levelling this out, probably pull some of the weeds out. We have got some, what's this called, lamb's mare or something like that this was called. There's a lot of this in my plot. Um, and from everything I've read, you just got to keep pulling out the root systems. Um, you'll never get completely rid of it, just got to keep on top of it. I didn't bring a bucket. I should have brought a bucket, shouldn't I? That's right. We'll go through it, I'll try and pick some stuff out. Um, I forgot to bring my tripod today, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to set up a hyperlapse of me doing that, but you'll find out. See you in a moment. So there's the trench all dug out, foot all the way around. That's a high point, so once I put this in, I'll level it afterwards. Have all our poles, our screen, instructions. Now I'm going to do this on my own. It states it's two person, 120 minutes, and I'm already worried about it. It's the very first thing it states. A three person assembly is required. And the wind just started catching up. Bring you back, hopefully, when it's done in a short while. If not, I'll bring you back when a disaster is struck. So there's one side done. Still got that side to put up properly. I sunk it in the ground quite far, which I'm happy with. According to the instructions, let's go around this way. It's literally just the section of pole underneath the strut that needs to be underground. But I'm putting all that underground. And then the material that will come over it also underground. So I might have to dig this out a bit further back. It's a bit wonky with only one side on. Back in a minute. Frames up. Nice and level. Not the tallest of things, but I did sink it in the ground, so that's fair enough really. Um, I'm loving this a lot on site. There's a chap on here, ever such a happy chap, um, just having a giggle with him, which is really nice. Both doing the stereotypical thing of going to name something, neither of us can remember the name of it, spend five minutes trying to figure out what it was, and by the time we've remembered, forgot why we were talking about it. 
Anyway, right, so there it is. Now I've got to get a sheet on it. It's been, what is it now? Half twelve. Another half hour, I reckon, be done. I've had to just put in the trench a little bit further. It was slightly out, but that's fine. So I'll put them in and then I'll show you what I'm doing to try and keep this secured because I live in the fens of Norfolk. We get very strong winds here. Back in a mo. Right, polytunnels up. I'm not overly keen on the way it looks. Um, but it's certainly going to serve a purpose. So it's 50 bob from Amazon. Material's actually quite thick, I'm quite surprised. And it's sturdy enough now it's all put together. All the edges are buried, I'll show you. Do you. So, they're all buried under. Still need to sort the ground out a little bit, get a bit more earth on there and level it all out. And for the front here, where you come in, I thought I'm gonna get those slabs. Because over here, there's a couple of slabs. But look what just happened to my poor, oh, my poor thing. Oh, well, I think I can see the problem. Bugger. Oh, well. Get myself a new handle, I think. Right, I'm going to carry on. Hello again. So, let's get this camera out. That's not the right angle, is it? There we go. Yeah, so, it's too cold. I was just trying to turn over some beds ready for the potatoes and things so they can get some good frost in them. Um, yeah, it didn't work out very well. Um, so yeah, let's come back to the greenhouse, shall we, where we began. A um, Couple of jobs I wanna get done today. So, firstly, potatoes. I need to start them chitting. I picked up two. So the first one we have got is Maris Pier. Got a nice big bag of them. It's the largest bag I've actually bought off them. So these are my second earlies. I need to get them ready for chitting, which these tubs are gonna come in very useful for. My first earlies, what one are they? Red Duke of York. So they'll be my first earlies, so they'll be the first ones in. Again, need to get them chitting. So just out of camera sight. The other thing I want to get done today, which I haven't actually managed to get round to, is my broad beans. So the way I do them, anybody who was with me last year will remember, I have got three training trays. And they're brilliant, I bloody love them. So what you do with them, put them there for now, you simply fold them up and you end up with these big old pots for them, one in each put it in this section here for the seed you end up being able to get a nice bit of root for it and then when it comes ready for plant you just pop them open take them out I had great success with these last year so I will be using them again this year so yeah I'm gonna get myself set up I've got to try and figure out how to use this camera properly because it's the first time I've used it hopefully the footage is better um, yeah and I'll bring you back shortly Or of course, I won't know how to stop the camera. That's another possibility. Is it this one? So, right. first ones we're gonna set up is the first earlies. Now, chitting. On the potato, you can see these little nubby bits called chits. Now that is where the roots are gonna grow. Now, potatoes themselves, they're seeds. They come from the tuber itself, and that's what we eat. So, one of these pops in the ground, and if I put it in the ground like this, obviously not right now, but if I put it in the ground like this, it's gonna be fine, it will grow. But to make it more successful, and to make the plant grow stronger, we do something called chitting. Now chitting is simply leaving this potato in a nice warm, but not damp atmosphere with not too much light. Now that's perfect for my office. It's nice and warm, I keep it about 16 degrees, that's more than enough for these to chit properly. And they'll be nice and dry. I've got a dehumidifier running in there, obviously, because it's my office outside in the garden. But yes, so what we do is, quite simple, if I turn the camera around and point you down to my tray. There we go. So these are all now just gonna be placed. Now the way that I'm gonna do them is the side with the most chits. So for this one, I would say it's this way. We're just gonna stand them like this. Now you can just leave them in the bag. 
However, if you leave them in the bag, the roots will grow through the bag, and the only way you're going to get the potatoes back out is by breaking off the new root system. So we put them in the tray for ease to be able to access them. Now you see this one's a difficult one to gauge because you've got quite a few chits on here. Now what I'm going to do in this circumstance, because you can see, hold this up to the camera, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six chits there, but then we also have another one here. I'm going to remove that one because I don't want this potato growing in too many different directions in this tray. So I'm going to do it like that. Again, placing it up so it's pointing in the way that I want it to. This one's got almost nothing on the base, quite a bit on here, so this one's going to lie like this. Again, we're just making it so the plant can grow, the spuddy can grow, sorry, as easily as possible. It also gives you the opportunity to go through your seed potatoes, and if there are any that are possibly rotting, possibly have damage, or possibly don't look like they've got any life in them at all anymore, um, then it's easy at this point just to remove them so you get better yields. Yeah, so when I was down the allotment just then, I was trying to sort it all out, trying to pull the tarpaulin off that I've shown um, a few times now that I've put down to kill off some weeds. It's done absolutely bugger all. There's still a huge amount of weeds in there, so I thought I'd just go in and till it. What's this one? Oh, this one should be okay. Um, so I'll go in there and I'll till it all up, and yeah, that didn't work out too well. My till just kept bouncing, my hoe just kept bouncing off the ground because it's so bloody frozen. We're due to get a little bit of warmer weather, but a lot wetter weather. So I think once I've got all of these set up in my greenhouse, I'm going to get the peppers done at some point as well, but I don't think that'll be on this video. We've got the uh, in-laws coming over today, so I've got other things I have to get done. Um, but yeah, I think once we've got a few more bits done and ready in the greenhouse, my next project will have to be collecting water. There's no water on my site, so I need to collect all the water I possibly can. Oh, we're going to have lots of lovely spuds this year. I think everybody's ambition when it comes to growing their own is to be able to sustain themselves. I've never managed it myself. Came close with salad a couple of times. Certainly come managed it with things like radish, but they're always an easy win. If anybody's getting themselves into gardening, radishes are always a fantastic thing to do first. It'll give you the confidence to try the other things. There we go. So that's all of these ones. Now what I'm gonna do is just roll the packet up, pop it in the tub, and then I know that, that are these, they are these ones. Move some of this all over the place. Onion sets I have to do still. Eventually I'll get round to doing these tasks. Lord knows when, but I will. And these are going to sit in my office. So it's going to be exactly the same for my second earlies. So at this point, I will just quickly whiz through this and bring you back in a moment. So that's these guys all done. Again, I'm just going to roll the bag up and keep it with the tray so I know which ones are which. There's nothing worse and forgetting which ones you're supposed to be putting in where. And then I'll just put these to one side for now. These will go in my office in a little while. Right then, so next thing I need to do is clear this, get it clean, and then I can start introducing some fresh compost and I'll show you what I do for my broad beans. Right, so, turns out my compost is frozen. So, I have to use some non-traditional ways of dealing with the compost now. So, all I'm doing here with my seed tray is getting some compost in it. And I think I'm going to have to use this to do it here. It's just solid as a rock. I suppose it's been negative four, negative three most nights for the last few nights. So, not promotion or anything, but this is the compost I swear by Jack's Magic. Um, I get it from a local garden centre. I don't know if you can get it across the UK or not, but I find this stuff has a nice consistency. It's got some nice little bits of well-rotted timber in it, some twigs and things like that, which is always good for keeping moisture, adding drainage at the same time. But most importantly, there's no bloody plastic in this stuff. 
than I find it with a lot of the other stuff that I've tried. This one has got so much plastic. Alright, that should be more than enough. Oh, I've poured half a bag down myself. Well, no, I am going to break it up with an axe. Now, broad bean seeds that I'm going to be putting in today, they're probably not going to like this all too much. Uh, I'm going to play around. My greenhouse is relatively warm. What are we at in the greenhouse now? Yeah, we're at 10 degrees in here. So we're at one degree outside. So definitely better than it is out there. Yeah, you can see you've got little bits of wood in here. Not too many bits, so it causes you problems. But enough so it aids drainage, which is ever so good, I think. All right, let's get rid of the axe. We can do the rest by hand. Where do I hang this? There it is. Right, now. I can just use it as it is. That's not going to cause me any issues whatsoever. However, what I like to do is add some perlite. Now the reason why I add perlite, to be honest, it also works for um, using vermiculite. You're supposed to use that for seedlings, but I find vermiculite's good for tiny seedlings, things like your chilies and things like that. Whereas broad beans, they are, well, they're not a small seed. They're not a small seed at all. The mix that I go for when I do this, I tend to do around about 70% compost, 30% um, perlite. This is just the way that I do it. Other people don't do it like this. Strictly speaking, with broad beans, your two main times to plant are in the fall, so autumn time around October, November, or in the spring. Now I'm doing it in the middle of winter, but I'm doing it in the greenhouse where I can control it. And I find that pulling this gives me a nice strong plant. But you do have to be careful with this stuff if you ever use it. That dust is bloody horrible. And I'm just going to mix this in with my hands. Now this will just aid moisture retention, but not in a way where the soil is going to stay too damp. But it means when I inevitably forget to come and water them, which will happen, there'll still be some moisture in this that will get released into the soil so it'll keep my plants going. It is also just straightforward good for the plants. Right. And there it is, all mixed. You see, it's a lovely consistency. Lovely jubbly. Right then, so let's start filling the tray, shall we? So again, I'll show you a couple of these and then I'll crack on off camera with these. So these are the trays, you lock them together. Oh come on, don't be silly for me, I'm trying to show you off. There we go. They're a bit fiddly to lock in but it pays off for these little root trainers. And they're so easy to store over winter when you're not using them, they're brilliant. And then these, once I've filled them all up and put my seeds in them, these are all going in my uh, trays that I picked up from the school. And then yeah, all I'm doing is just filling them up. I won't need to compress them too much. And there's your tray ready to put your seeds in. Marvellous, isn't it? What an awesome system. The way it works, you've got on one side little stubby bits, and on the other side little holy bits. The stubby bits go in the holy bits. I probably shouldn't say that, I'll get demonetised. Well, I'm monetised. But yeah, pop all these in, and just fill her up. Now, in the garden, my beds were two metres by one metre, well, they still are at the moment. Ooh, that's a hard bit of that now. Um, and I grew 35 plants in one of my beds. 
Now, I'm actually intending on doing more than that this year because I have my allotment. And me and the wife really, really enjoyed broad beans on toast. They're bloody delicious. Bit of basil, bit of garlic. Absolutely lovely and scrumptious. So this year, whilst I'm putting in a pack now, I will also be putting a pack direct sown later on in the year, once I figure out where I want them. And these will be the ones that come up first. And I'm very, very excited to have them. We've tried having the frozen ones, and it's just not the same. Not the same at all. Yeah. I ended up showing you how to do an extra one, but it is what it is. Right, well, I'm going to carry on with this laborious task, which I'm actually really enjoying. It's nothing quite like getting your hands dirty, is there? And I will see you when it's done. Another thing worth noting, on the base of these little units, you've got these little flaps. Can you see that on the camera? So they're just little flaps of plastic. It just allows the water to drain through. Now, if I'll show you now rather than show you when one's full, and I tip all the soil out. All right, so pots are all now set. Here are our broad bean seeds. Broad bean seeds. Now, I use Meteor. That's the one I've had the most success with. Now, there are ways of doing this which I don't do. First thing that some people do, and a lot of people do, is they soak their seeds for 24 hours before planting. Now, I'm not going to worry about that, I very rarely do, um, but that's because I'm not in any interest to have these germinate quickly. These take two or three weeks to come up, that's absolutely fine by me. But by soaking them, you're allowed to soak up moisture, it activates the seeds. The other thing to bear note is plants are very clever. And what they tend to do is they do they drop their seeds in the autumn and they don't want their plants growing. Let me turn this camera around. Ooh, there we go, you can see my ugly mug. So they don't want their plants growing before it's time. If you've got a seed that starts growing in the autumn, it's going to have to deal with the winter. It doesn't want that, it wants it to hibernate. So what most seeds have is an enzyme around them. It's a suppressant. So it keeps it in hibernation. Now, by rinsing and washing and soaking your seeds, you're removing that, so you're encouraging early growth. Again, I'm not too fussed at this point. Later on, when I start looking at doing my peppers and my cucumbers, peas and things like that, I'm gonna soak them because I want them to come through nice and quick. These guys, I'm planting them out of the time that I should be. I shouldn't be planting these until February. It's only mid-January. So for me, absolutely fine. I have some time to get them done, so that's what I'm gonna do. So. Bring it back down again. Sorry for the terrible camera work as usual. So, this section here, where you've got the little black spot, that's known as the eye. So for me, I want the eye down. So all I'm gonna do, I'll start, where can you see on the camera? You can see it here. Let's just pick one up. So, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I'll start on this one. So I'm gonna put the eye down and I'm just gonna push it in to my finger's depth. Do that with all of these. Now these aren't as finickety as things like melons and cucumbers that need to be put in in a specific way. Um, some people will still do that, I'm, I'm not one of those people. And all I'm going to do now is just carry on and fill all of these trays up with the seeds exactly the same way. So just pushing them in one finger's depth. Once these are all in, then I'll top them back up with soil, give them a very small sprinkling of water, although I don't want to give them too much because we are still facing frost. And yeah, I'll bring you back in a moment. It's also very important to check your seeds. Now, I have to apologise for my camera work here. Uh, there we go. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's a small hole in the middle of this one where something's been nibbling it. Big old split on this one. See so going down that edge. And again, on this one, focus camera, there's another big old hole in that one. So it's important to check your seeds as you go. And there we go. They're all now set, so they can sit in the greenhouse. I'll put a little sticker on the front of it so then I know these are my broad beans. And yeah, fantastic. So that'll be everything for this video. 
apologies, it's been a little while since I've uploaded. We've had a week and a half. I've been doing bits and pieces, as you've seen through the context of this video. Um, but yeah, that's what's done for today. Um, next week, I am hoping that we can get on with everything for the heated propagator. I need to get the chilies in. Need to get the sweet peppers in. I might get one of the varieties of cucumbers, the telegraph in. Because I know I planted them early last year and they were brilliant. had brilliant success. But still need to figure out what I'm doing in that polytunnel at the allotment. I think I'm going to start off with some winter uh, salads and some spring salads, get them in. And then I'm probably going to grow some peas as well in there because I might be able to get an early yield out of them before I take them all out. And whatever it is we decide to put in there, we put in there. But anyway, thank you ever so much for joining us today. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, please don't forget if you do enjoy this like and subscribe remember to leave a comment as well as I say I don't know whether I should be putting tape on my polytunnel or not so if anybody out there who has one and has a similar issue let us know what have you done to try and re um, try to fix the issue it would be greatly appreciated anyway have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time at our garden